So we're actually talking about mental equivalence today. We're going to talk about the law of consciousness. We're going to talk about the law of mind in action. We're going to talk about the law of cause and effect. However, before we talk about all those laws, we're going to talk about truth. So what is the core belief that we have here that we know not only for ourselves, we know for everybody else that all of God, all of it, lives in and through and as you. Take a breath. Now, knowing that, how many of you in the back of your mind went, oh yeah, probably good for her, not for me. Just a little, come on. Yeah, exactly. Because we're human and we have lived in our human mind for so long, it is difficult or an opportunity for growth for us to recognize over and over and over again and claim as our truth, we are God in form. Now imagine what the world would look like if we actually lived that way all the time. Absolutely knew it. Then I would say I wanted something and bam, it would appear because I would know I'm in conscious connection with God always. And we are manifesting together all, my, all the time because my word is that powerful. And yet what happens with our word when we use it? We say our spiritual mind treatment and we wait. And because we are so speedy with our waiting, we may make, wait 24 hours. Some of you may be really good. You might wait a week and then go, well, obviously I'm not supposed to have that didn't show up and we unhook that prayer or at the end of the prayer when you're sitting with a practitioner and, and your whole soul has been moved and you know that they absolutely the prayer they gave you was the absolute truth and your life is going to change and you walk out of the building and the sun hits you and you go yeah no I don't, I, I don't know what silver bullet that person was trying to feed me, but that's not the truth. Because we live in our stories, don't we? We live on our past beliefs. And we hang on to them. We hang on to them tight. And what happens with our stories when we hang on to them and we keep repeating them and we keep sharing them over and over and over again, the universe goes, oh, okay, they like that story. And it may not show up exactly the same way, but your life kind of looks the same. Because nothing's going to shift. And so what we ask in this philosophy is that you do some of the work. Like you really start, to, we ask you to give up those stories or to rewrite them so they work for you. It's interesting because I'm working with someone and we got into one of my stories and I had said it happened in sixth grade. And I, I see this person like twice a month. And so the next time I went back to see her, instead of saying sixth grade, she said, you know, when you were six years old. And instead of correcting her, I thought, oh, the story goes back further because that was the reality that there is a hidden belief in there that is so deep I will tell you that when somebody gets close to it I can feel my whole body just shut down like we're not going there you know that little six year old girl she's not going there and so that's what I'm working because that's one of the things that we do it's like an onion you know you peel off the first layer onion still looks pretty good doesn't it and then bam something happens and your eyes start to water and you're like oh and we peel off another layer because the beliefs that are driving us they're way down there deep remember most of our beliefs were implanted for us when we were very small so there's the law of consciousness so is everybody going to first of all work with me on the fact that you're God informed and if you don't believe it by yourself, do what I did when I first got here. I first started seeing all of you as God in form. Absolutely knew it for you. Couldn't see it in myself, but knew it for all of you. Because eventually, 
somebody will say to you what Reverend Susie Shadle said to me. Really, Gail? You think that you're that special? That you get to be outside of the circle? Everybody else. Everybody else. Not you. And I was like, now, we were very close friends so she could talk to me like that. Just so you know. That's not something a practitioner is going to say to you. Unless you're like really tight. Or you come to see me. Because <laughs> that's just kind of who I am. So law of consciousness. So first of all, you need to understand that who you are is based on what you've read, what you've seen, what you've been told. Now think about that. Everything you've read, everything you've seen, oh God bless social media and the news today, and everything you've been told, your school teachers, your parents, your siblings, whether they were kidding or not, especially when we were young. Because we take that information and we're young and we don't know what it means and we process it. And we don't tell anybody we're processing it and we make it our truth. And so what the mind of the law of consciousness is are you willing to then look at something that pops up in your life and do something with it you know there are tools that you can use you could see a practitioner you can practice EFT which um, Kim this summer is going to teach workshops on which is emotional freedom technique some of you know it is tapping there are different things you can do. One of the things you could do immediately is when, a, when something comes up and you think, wow, by what authority do I believe that? Like, is that my belief? Is that something I really believe about myself? Or is that something that that little six-year-old Gail made hers and I haven't unhooked her from it yet? Because that's my job. I have to take responsibility for my, uh, my life. My job is to go back to that little six-year-old and say, they were just mean-spirited little girls. You don't have to believe that. You don't have to believe that. Or, of course you weren't adopted. Your brother and sister were teasing you. <laughs> at dinner, at Thanksgiving, it wasn't that funny then. <laughs> And my response was, I'm not the one with blue eyes, because my sister had blue eyes. But she was eight years older than me, so she still had the upper hand. But those are the kinds of things that our law of consciousness implants in us, and we forget that they're there. It's in our subconscious mind. It's not the thoughts that we recognize. It's the thoughts deep, deep down that we aren't even aware of. And then somebody says something or does something, our feelings get hurt. That's when you want to open up Pandora's box and go, wait a minute. Why did I take that so personally? This person likes me. They were probably teasing. Why did it make me go sideways? Because it really has nothing to do as an adult what somebody says to you. It's how you're processing it. It's how you are processing the information. And so just ask yourself when that happens in the future, by what authority do I give this belief? How am I allowing that to truly play out in my life? So mind in action. I lost my train of thought, I apologize, ha <laughs> ha, is to deliberately start to change our belief system. And we're the only ones that can do that. And how do we do that? You can do it through affirmations. You can do it by seeing a practitioner and doing spiritual mind treatments. There's lots of different ways for you to start to change a belief. Because I promise you, as you sit here, since now I've told you about the law of consciousness, your subconscious mind is going to start to bubble up. And things are going to start to appear in your life for you to go, huh. And some of you already know what those things are. 
And so mind in action is to actively do something to change. You know, we offer classes here and a lot of, I don't know what, why we aren't getting a lot of people going to classes right now. Because the classes are not only where we tend to build community, because it's where you really get to know people on a personal basis. It's where you really start to get to unravel what you've been told and taught about yourself and then what you want as your truth. That's why classes are so rich. It's not, you know, it's, it's a way for you to start to embody this philosophy. When I first found it, I couldn't take enough classes. Now, I know you guys aren't me, and so that's not an expectation, but I literally back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back classes. Absolutely. Because I was hungry to change my life. And something in me knew this was my last chance to do that. Now I know now, there's never a last chance. You can change your life at any moment of any day. It's that old theory, I wish I'd planted a tree 20 years ago and I didn't plant a tree today. You know, I wished I'd found this philosophy when I was young. God bless those people that did and were raised in it. Wasn't me, but I found it when I found it and I have made it my life. So mind in action is realizing all the time that you're, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. I guess you're like a yard or a garden and it's full, but you're like my yard right now. It's full of winter weeds and overgrowth. And it looks pretty junky. Really junky, actually. So mind in action is like weeding that and taking out everything that's not supposed to be there. And then knowing that my work's not done. Right? Sometimes we think, oh, I've taken all those classes. I'm good. And then life kind of goes sideways and we're thinking, well, how did that happen? I took all the classes. Because life is life and it's going to happen. And that's why we're given the tools so we know what to do. So like your garden, you can clean it out. I swear to goodness gracious, I cleaned it out last year under this beautiful Japanese maple. And you'd think I hadn't been underneath that maple in way over a year. Why? Because I didn't tend to it. I did it. It was clean. And I was like moving on. You have to take care of your garden. You have to take care of your thoughts. And that gets us into the law of cause and effect. Effect is out here, right? Does everybody have that? What our life looks like. What's happening to us right now. Where that happens is in here. Nothing out here happens without it going on in here. Now think about that. I am responsible for my life. And so every out picturing that I draw to me is because of thought that I had yesterday, the day before when I was six years old, depending on who's driving the bus. Now remember, we're all at choice. Who could drive the bus for us? God, right? Put God in the driver's seat. That's your soul. That's your infinite wisdom. That's the thing itself that's always been with you and always will be with you. Put that person in the driver's seat. However, sometimes we forget for whatever reason. There's lots of reasons we forget. And that little six-year-old comes up, plants themselves right in God's lap and says, I'm driving. This was actually a visual that was given to me. I'm driving the bus. Now here's the thing. You don't want to yell at the six-year-old, go away. Get off the bus. It's not going to solve anything. What we resist persists. So what I invite you to do is talk to the person. Hey, you know, it's kind of hard to see when you're sitting in my lap. Maybe you'd like to stand next to me. How would that work? Because what we want to do is change, maybe, 
I'm pretty happy with my life right now, so I'm just saying to God more, please. However, there was a time in my life, I had a lot of different people driving my bus. And God wasn't one of them. I don't even know at that time if I believe God was on the bus with me. I was a train wreck waiting to happen. And sometimes it did happen. And that was my life. And I didn't know any better. I didn't know how to change. And so that is the brilliance of what we teach here. If it's my responsibility, then what are my tools and what do I do? And the law of cause and effect is looking at something and say, huh, I would really like to change that in my life. And then take an action to change that. So in our gratitude circle this morning, I thank Beth. Because Beth and I had a conversation at one time. And it started, a little light bulb went off in my life, light, head, wherever, <laughs> inside me, little light bulb about changing the, my relationship with food. Let me word it like I'm supposed to word it. Changing my relationship with food. Then believe it or not, my husband who never wants to change anything in his life started to watch a movie called Forks, Forks Over Knives. And he said, I want to wait and watch this movie with you. And I thought, okay, but we're not going to be vegan just so you know. And then I watched the movie, and at the end of the movie, I said, okay, we're going to be vegan. And he said, I thought you said we weren't going to do that. And it was about taking responsibility for my life. And I was ready to do it. This is not the first time that I have become vegetarian or pescatarian or whatever animal that I decided I wasn't going to eat. This was deeper. And it's not that I don't love animals. Don't misunderstand me. But when I watched the movies of, about the animals, three to four weeks down the road, I would be somewhere and I'd want a bacon cheeseburger with uh, an egg on the top and the animal was not sitting at the table with me. And so the movie didn't have an ongoing effect on me and food. This did because it was about my health. That's the consciousness. That is cause and effect. It's not outside in. And the interesting thing is if you look at your life, it never has been. And some of you I know have some really um, horrific stories in your life that make it look like because of that, this is what's going on now. And the truth is because of that and the fact that you hang on to the story, this is what's going on now. And so it really is about change your thinking, change your life. And it sounds so simple, doesn't it? And if it was simple, we'd all do it. If it was simple to believe we are God in form and we deserve the kingdom of heaven because it lives within, that would be our life right here and right now. How many of you really believe you're living that life right here and right now? All right. And so some of you aren't. And the question is, instead of going back to shame and blame, come into the fact, okay, this is a repeating pattern. How far back does the pattern go? And wherever it is, am I willing to change it? And may I just say one more time, it sounds like a soapbox for practitioners. That's when you call in a practitioner. And you work with them. And I'm not talking about one session. It's kind of like going to the gym. One session is great. And maybe some of you, one session, and you're going to be rocking and rolling. Personally, I see a practitioner once a month. I actually was seeing a practitioner once a month. Right now, I, I took a little break. But once a month. Some people, once a week. Once a week. And why not? Because you're feeding your soul and you're changing your life. And so I invite you to really think about the action steps and the different laws and to remember the first, the first gift 
is that we're God in form. Every single one of us, God in form. And when you, and when you can really breathe that in and say yes to that, I promise you, your life will start to shift. And so I'm actually going to look over so I don't skip any. So law of consciousness, when things come up, you ask yourself, when a belief comes up, you're so sure, I'm not going to get that job, I'm too old, I'm not going to, um, you know, whatever. I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too skinny, I'm t not too skinny, I, you know, whatever. Ask yourself, by whose authority am I claiming that belief? And if it's yours and you want to hang on to it, good. If it's working for you, if it's causing you discomfort in your life, you might want to change your belief. And then the law of mind in action is how do I change that belief? And so here's a quote or, or an affirmation. I know who I am. All of God is manifest at the point of me now. I've got this. I know who I am. All of God is manifest at the point of me now. I've got this. Three times and then I think beetle just juice appears. I know who I am. All of God is manifest at the point of me now. I've got this. And then cause and effect. Create something different on the inside. And I promise you, it will manifest different in your life on the outside. And a practice that I like to use is you just draw. Remember the line in the sand people used to talk about? You just draw a line. I'm going to step back. I don't want to fall off the stage. You draw a line. And you say to the divine or to God or to whatever you talk, say, Okay, I am done with this. <laughs> and, I, and I am going to now um, eat have a healthy eating lifestyle and so my request is you help me with this you guide me you give me the tools and I will leave whatever has kept me from living that life that I desire here now and then you step over the line and claim that as your good and I promise you it works I've done it for myself and I've done it with clients. It works. Your body is in motion. So it's jumping the broom, if you will. All right, so let's pray. Yeah, that deep breath in. So knowing that there is one life, it's God's life, it's my life right here and right now. That everything that God is, everything that God is is me there is no separation there is no division there is God there is me we are one and I live my life from that belief from that knowing from that connection that that divine energy that is the truth of who I am always has been and always will be I live from that knowingness from this day forward I carry it with me in my heart and I express it through myself, as myself. Knowing that this is who I've come here to be. This magnificent being, this expression of the divine. And as I know this is true for me, I know this is true for every single one of you. Every single one of you, God in form, that streaming, magnificent, expanding consciousness that will leave this body temple someday and still be you, God, one. And so in knowing that, I know right here and right now for every person here, the magnificence of their soul is talking to them, is screaming at them, is saying, yes, let go of all those stories that keep you tied to who you think you are or who you think you should be and become that divine soul that knows the truth of who you are and why you're here.
because the truth is that is the calling that is the magnificence of God as you each one of us unique none of us no two snowflakes ever get to be the same and so I am so grateful that I know this for myself and I know this for all of you that I just say thank you God thank you God for each and every soul that says yes to themselves fully and completely and so it is in that thank you that I turn these words over knowing that the, as they have been expressed through me they go back into that field of infinite possibilities where they came from that that divine being that I choose to call God has said yes because that's what it does it says yes it has said yes to me it has said yes to you and in that yes we all decide to just let go and allow that spirit to guide us. And in that, we say thank you, God, and together we say, and so it is. Namaste.